Welcome. In this class, we will be talking about the concept of plate tectonics. In the previous session, we had already talked about seafloor spreading. Now, before we start with plate tectonics, we must be familiar with the various ocean topographies as we have seen in the concept of seafloor spreading. We must be familiar with the concept of earthquake volcanoes, the distribution of volcanoes, the sources of heat and the sources of geomagnetism. So since we have covered those, we will be now moving on to the next topic that is plate tectonics. This concept was given by Tuzo Wilson. Now first we will start uh, in an order such that we will understand the history, then we will talk about the major elements. We will talk about the process involved and finally the three building blocks. Okay, So we will be covering all these topics under the uh, concept of plate tectonics. So let's start with the history of plate tectonics. Now as I said this concept by give, was given by Tuzo Wilson. Tuzo Wilson in 1965 tried to incorporate two different concepts. One was the concept of seafloor spreading. And another was the concept of Wegener's continental drift theory given in 1912 and around 1962. So what he tried to do was, he tried to incorporate these two concepts un under a single ambit and that was known as plate tectonics. Later on, Lucid's geography, uh, sorry, Lucid's geometry was also laid forward as a basic mechanism to understand uh, the concept of plate tectonics and this was given by McKinsey. Now understanding this concepts of geometry, there was another hypothesis that was propounded which was known as the paving stone hypothesis. And paving stone hypothesis suggested that structures are created towards the ridges and rewn towards the periphery or the trenches. So similar to what was explained in the seafloor spreading, paving stone hypothesis tried to explain that features are created towards the ridges and they are ruined towards the trenches. And under this hypothesis, it was Isaacs and Seeks who tried to understand the concept and explain this in a further systematic manner. So this is how the concept of plate tectonics evolved. Now, <coughs> Just a recap of the two concepts of Wegener's theory and seafloor spreading to understand better the concept of plate tectonics. So here you have the two animations that will help you through. So here you have the present day world map and as you can see it's we are moving back into the history and you can see this as a single continent here and this continent was known as Pangaea and the remaining ocean body was known as Penthesia. So this is how Wegener tried to explain the continental drift theory that in the previous times there was a single continent which slowly and gradually drifted away. On the other hand, uh, you have this animation which talks about the concept of seafloor spreading. So you have the hot molten magma that is rising towards the ocean ridge, the uh, let's say the mid-Atlantic ridge lying between the American continent and the Eurasian and the African continent. So you have the hot magma that is rising through and gradually spreading towards both the sides. So towards the center you have the new rocks that are being formed or the new material that is being formed and towards the periphery you will see old material which is colder and more dense as compared to the uh, region where the magma is erupting. So these two concepts laid the basic foundation to understand the concept of plate tectonics. Now before we move on to how the process of plate tectonic works, let's understand the basic elements. Now as the name suggests, it's made up of two words that is plate and tectonics. Tectonic is derived from the word tecton and tecton means builder or architect. So what tecton tries to explain the concept of builder or an architect and you have plates. So plates are um, the different slides on the earth surface that Wilson classified. So you have let's say an African plate, an American plate and so on. So these are all considered as plates. Now wherever the plates are meeting you have the region which is known as boundaries or we call it further plate boundaries. 
So the first term that we must be familiar is plate. The second is tectonics. So plate. Second is tectonics. Next is plate boundaries. The fourth is plate meeting areas or meeting regions I could say. Now when I say boundary it includes a narrow portion where just the, simply the plates are meeting or touching one another. When I say plate meeting region it includes a broader area which incorporates a much uh, broader region and it talks more about the uh, characteristics of the region. Then to understand the plate boundaries we must be familiar with the structure of the earth's interior. So you have core, mental and crust. So crust is the outermost layer. Then you have mental and finally is the core. To understand plate tectonics we will be focusing mainly on crust and mental. So crust is the solidified surface. Mental is a kind of liquid surface. So mental can further be divided as upper mental and lower mental. Upper mental is further liquefied as compared to lower mental which is considered to be in a much dense form as compared to upper mental and this region is known as asthenosphere. So you have the crust, mental and core that is the next thing you must be clear with. Now mental includes uh, you have various iron, aluminium, uh, sulphur uh, and oxides are all included under mental. So you have crust, core and mental that is the structure of the interior of the earth that is the fifth element interior of earth that you must be familiar with. Now once you are familiar with all these elements you must try to understand the process of plate tectonics. So when I say process of plate tectonics, it starts with a very simple fashion. So to demonstrate this, uh, I have taken an example of uh, cream biscuits here to help you understand this concept better. So I have a bourbon biscuit with me. You can see the uppermost layer as the crust, the cream filling in between as the asthenosphere or the upper mantle and the lower surface as the lower mantle. So you have crust, upper mantle and lower mantle that we are trying to understand here. Now what is happening here when we talk about the process of earth surface, uh, process of plate tectonics, the crust that is the topmost layer, layer is moving on the asthenosphere. So the first concept here is earth is made up of crustal plates. That is the first concept here. So first I am trying to explain that it is made up of the crustal plates. The second I am trying to explain here is the asthenosphere that is the cream filling of the biscuit is the uh, liquid portion and it is moving. So ocean is moving I can say. Ocean is moving and the mental is moving. So you have mental and ocean that are moving and above that you have the region which is spreading. So you have the spreading region. So as we have explained under the concept of sea floor spreading you have the region that is spreading. So you have this region which is spreading here and you have another region where the, uh, the magma that is rising towards the ridges is getting subducted. So you have the region where the ocean is spreading. So this is the spreading area. So you have the spreading zone here. The next is as you can see here you have convection currents that come up. So these convection currents tend to move the plates in different directions. So you have the plate and that plate can move in different directions. So it can move I can say it can move this side. Another plate can move this side, it can move front, it can move on the back side. So there can be various kind of movements of this single plate on the earth surface and finally is the source of energy. So third is different movements of the plate and finally is the source of energy and this source of energy is the radioactivity inside the mantle. 
so radioactivity is the major source of energy for the process of plate tectonics now once we understand the process of plate tectonics it's clear to understand that as we have talked about in the class on sea floor spreading you have the ridge where the new magma comes out and on the other side you have the subduction zone where it tend, tends to go down and there is a kind of magma driven conveyor belts that we can see within the earth surface or within the mantle now this is the basic process to understand why plates are moving and why countries are either moving apart or coming close to one another as what tozo wilson was trying to explain so as you can see here again you have the spreading zone so you have the waves that is spreading out from here and as you can see here this waves are spreading out but they are trying to subduct on this region so there is the zone of subduction which is seen here so you have two cases of subduction one is a normal angle of subduction and another is a lower angle of subduction which you can see so here the subsidence is less as compared to this case where there is higher subduction you will see steeper features and you will see a more strong magma driven uh, conveyor belt that can be formed here so we talk about how the uh, magma moves within the earth and that leads to the movement of plates on the surface so trying to understand this there were three basic criteria in we in which he explained the movement of plates so as you can see here you have different plates that are given in this animation and these arrows that come out depict the process of movement so you as you can see this plate i can say is moving apart so this arrow goes here and this arrow goes here but these two plates are moving close to one another so the coast of south america towards the andes is getting compressed or i can say there is a uh, convergent force here so when these two come together it's a kind of convergent region and this convergent zone is the main region where you can see origin of basic mountains so you have andes that originate here now to understand the process of plate tectonics there are three types of plate movements that wilson tried to explain the first was divergent plate movement the second was convergent plate movement and the third was transform plate movement so you have the three movements that is the divergent convergent and transform movement now let's try to understand all these three by help of the uh, the again the biscuits here so you have the same biscuit here a cream filled biscuit so what i am trying to do i am trying to explain you the concept of divergent plate boundaries so divergent plate boundaries this is the upper crust and this crust kinds of spreads out so it kinds of move apart as you can see here so you have the divergent plate boundaries now a lot of students get confused with the names so divergent is also known as the constructive plate boundaries since the two plates are diverging there is something that is being formed in that region so it's also known as constructing constructive plate boundaries or accreting plate boundaries okay the next is convergent plate boundaries so as you have the piece of biscuit here and the, it's broken into the upper crust is broken into two parts but rather than moving apart they kind to subduct in this region or they try to compress one another on the same region so as you can see here there is a force being applied which brings or overlaps the two things together so you have the convergent plate boundaries convergent plate boundaries are also known as destructive plate boundaries because they are trying to uh they are colliding and since they are colliding they are destructing so it is also known as destructive plate boundaries or they are also called as consuming because one which is more powerful is consuming the another plate so it's a kind of fold formation that you can see here so that is what is convergent plate boundaries and finally you have transform plate boundaries where you have the two pieces that are there and rather than either moving apart or overlapping 
they are trying to slip past one another. So I can say there is a kind of movement that is lateral and that is known as the transform movement. So you have the transform faults that can be seen. Now these three are the major faults, uh, major plate boundaries that he tried to explain. So let's move here. As you can see in this animation back, you have the various plate boundaries that we are trying to explain. So the region where the two plate boundaries are moving apart is the divergent coast. Where they are trying to co uh, converge is the uh, convergent plate boundaries. It's also known as destructive plate boundaries or consuming plate boundaries. And the region where there are convergent plate boundaries, you mainly see origin of mountains. Now when I say convergent plate boundaries, it can be of three types. You have ocean-ocean convergence, you have ocean-continent convergence and you have continent-continent convergence. So convergence is one coming close to another. So you have, as you can see here, this is subducting under this plate. So if I say continent-continent convergence, the best example would be Himalayan mountains. So you have the Asian landmass that's here and the, uh, the Indian landmass and the Asian landmass and you have the Himalayan belt here. And on the both sides you have continent and these continents are coming close to one another. And when this is formed, this is an example of folded mountains. So most of the convergence region would be examples of folded mountains. So Himalaya is an example of continent-continent convergence. If I talk about ocean-continent convergence, the best example would be Andes. So you have Rockies and Andes towards the North American and the South American coast. South American you have Andes and uh, sorry, South American you have Andes and North American you have Rockies and both these are formed towards the coastal area. So you have the ocean region here and the continent region here. So when the ocean region converges onto the continental region, you have the formation of Rockies and Andes. So this would be an example of ocean continent convergence and finally you have the ocean ocean con uh, convergence so as you can see marina trench in pacific this would be an example of the trench that is formed due to ocean ocean convergence in the pacific so you have ocean ocean convergence that would lead to marina trench so we talked about the three types of convergent plates now moving on to divergent plate boundaries Divergent plate boundaries, I can say the things rip apart. So when they rip apart, they move apart. So the plates that are moving apart would be the classic example of divergent plate boundaries like the Pacific plates and the uh, plates that are moving apart towards the mid-Atlantic ridge. So that would be the region of divergent plate boundaries. Moving on to transform plate boundaries, as I said, they uh, slit slide one another. So you have <coughs> St. Andes Falls on the coast of California would be a classic example of transform pl uh, plate boundaries and finally you have hot spots. Hot spots are the region of uh, uh, I can say uh, where plate plumes over the mantle. So you have sudden gushes of geysers and uh, hot material that's coming out from the earth's interior. Uh, best example we can explain is the Yellowstone National Park in the United States would be an example of uh, hot spots. So there are the four major things that we try to understand. Now as you can see, you have occurrence of earthquakes towards divergent, transform and hot spot regions but these are of a small to moderate size size on co in contrast to that if we talk about the convergent plate boundaries you can see bigger stars here that means it is a region of severe earthquakes or high amplitude earthquakes you can see here for example if i talk about mount rainier or mount hood on the uh, coast of uh, rockies in north america so that would be a region of ocean continent convergence and you have huge earthquakes and volcano prevalence in those regions so those would be an example of uh, the region with higher volcanoes, uh, volcanic activities or seismic activities. So convergent plate boundaries usually tend to have 
uh, high amplitude or high scale on the seismic uh, activities in this region as compared to the divergent transform uh, plates and the hot spots. Finally, uh, in this map you can see the black line here shows the divergent plate boundaries. The blue line shows the convergent region and as you can see most of the convergent regions form the Pacific ring of fire. So you have this Pacific ring of fire that is formed at the convergent plate boundaries and towards the convergent plate boundaries you have huge earthquake activities. The blue circles here denote the uh, level of earthquake activities in this region. So this hole is the Pacific ring of fire with high volcanic and seismic activities and these are formed towards the convergent zone. On the other hand, the mid-Atlantic ridge forms the divergent plate boundaries and one you have towards the uh, Arctic Ocean and towards the South of Pacific Ocean. So these are the major plate boundaries and finally in this map you can understand the major plates that, uh, that were used by Wilson to explain the concept of plate tectonics. So he tried to explain this concept by using 7 major plates and around 16 minor plates that he tried to explain. So Pacific plate, South American plate, North American plate, African, Eurasian and Australian were the major plates, Antarctic were the major plates, Nazca plate, Philippines plate, Carolina plate. Arabic plate, Indian plate were kind of minor plates that were incorporated under the concept of uh, plate tectonics that was propounded by Tuzo